Hi, I'm Tom Stevens and welcome to Microsoft Project Made Easy. If you haven't seen other videos in this series, please click subscribe and check my playlist. I go right from the very beginnings of using Microsoft Project to more specialized topics like today's topic, which we'll be looking at macros. How do you create macros in Microsoft Project? A macro is a recording of a series of steps that you make in the software program. And very often, especially in Microsoft Project, you might have to do six or seven or 10 things to get where you want to go. And if it's something that you do fairly frequently, then that can be a little bit laborious. So this can be a real uh, time saver. This is kind of like working towards making your work more effortless, so to speak. So if you're sort of a power user of Microsoft Project and you use it frequently, you'll appreciate the fact that you can record a whole series of steps and either use a shortcut like the control key or just click up onto the macros and select from one of your recorded macros to perform those operations. I don't often use macros when I'm teaching because I've, I need to get people rooted in the foundations. But if you're more comfortable with using Microsoft Project, macros can be a real godsend. So I'm in the task tab right now. And where do we find macros? Well, we can go to the view tab. And under the View tab, you'll see at the very end, it says Macros. And if we pull down, we'll see it says View Macros, Record Macros, Visual Basic. That's if you want to get into programming in Microsoft Project and Macro Security. First thing off, you want to make sure is that the macro settings are set. Disable all macros with notification. You don't want without notification because then your macros just won't work. You won't know why. This at least would notify you to turn on the macro. Um, you don't want macros working all the time because it could be like a virus or something on your system. So you don't want that to be given permission to run. Uh, so you, you generally you pick disable all macros with notifications and that's in the trust setting. So I got that through macros. The other place that you can also find that is under file options. And if you go to trust center, trust center savings, then you'll see the same screen. So that brings you there. Options where you can customize things in Microsoft Project, but be careful setting certain things in options because it can really mess you up, particularly if you're setting hours and weeks and different things. You're not too sure what you're doing. We'll talk about that in other videos. All right, so I'm just going to click uh, cancel right now. I'm gonna go back to this macros tab and I'm going to click on uh, the record macro. So let's make a recording of one that I think is pretty useful. I'm going to call it the successor filter. Successor filter. And let's notice here we can put a description. So we can call it that uh, filtering uh, for successors to check for open ends. And that's what I talk about in some of my earlier videos where actually one of the, if you look on my playlist, video one, uh, how you wanna make sure everything is connected when you're setting up your critical path. But anyways, this gives you the description. Now I could put a control key letter that I might like here. Uh, you can use any letter that's not already taken. And believe it or not, there's a lot of letters that are already taken. So I believe the letters that are free in Microsoft Project that haven't been taken. You know how you do Control B for bold and Control X for cut and Control V for paste? If you didn't know those ones, those are really good. There's a bunch of ones. Uh, you can't use those, but you could con use Control A, E, J, L, M, Q, or T. So any one of those are still free. You could use them. So in other words, you could have uh, seven macros with control shortcuts. You can make a lot more macros, just not using the control. So you would save that for your most important ones. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to use L, I'll just put in maybe L. Um, so we've got uh, control L. And I'm going to uh, see here, it says store macro in global file. You have a choice, global file or this project. If I pick global file, this macro will work in all my Microsoft Project files that I'm using on this computer, which is good. So if this is the computer that you're always using, then you've got them all listed, that's great. If you pick 
this project, it'll only work in this project file. So maybe you've got, a, it's a big project and you've got certain macros just unique to this project. You could put it on this project. You could also, if you put it in this project, you should be able to, when you share the file, somebody else could also use those macros. Uh, they can't use it when it's global file though. Uh, so I'm gonna leave this at global file. You also notice that it says row references relative and absolute id so if i was picking something it would pick and i picked a row it would pick by the id number uh, if i picked absolute id right if i pick relative it'll pick relative to whatever is in this particular row absolute field will pick based on the name at the top of the column right relative will just be looking at whatever you happen to pick uh, the number of rows relative, say, to the end. So typically, this is what you want. You want to have it in relative for the row references and typically absolute for the columns because generally that's how you work it with columns. But you might have some conditions where you might want to use this or use that. So just keep that in mind uh, if you're creating a different macro and it's not going to quite work with you doing absolute or relative. But generally, the default works very well. So I'm going to click OK. And it says a macro name must begin with a letter and contain letters, numbers, and the underscore character. It cannot contain spaces or be a word that project serves as a keyword. It gets fussy when you pick a control, like a, for a control letter. So what I have to do is I have to have an underscore here. And I've got to also have a number. And so I've got letters, I've got an underscore, and I've got a number. Don't ask me why, but that's what it asked for. So now I clicked OK. So it's now running the macro. So it's going to record all the steps of everything that I do right now. So I, what I want to do is I want to filter out the headings. I want to show the successor columns. I want to filter the successor columns so I only see the blank uh, the blank successors. All right, so let's do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on resource names. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go insert column. I want to find the successor column, so I'm going to type S. I'm going to click on successors, insert it, right? So now I've got it inserted. I'm going to pull this a little bit tighter here. And so I've inserted the successor column. I'm going to go to the format column. I'm going to click on, I'm going to actually click on summary tasks. So it got rid of all of the summary tasks for now. And then I'm going to filter for successors that I only see the blank ones. I only want to see the blank successor. So I'm going to go select all and show me the blank. And it should probably end up showing me, I think, two in this case because I remember I had one that didn't have a successor on purpose and then the last one it won't have a successor so I'm okay with that all right so I've got that all recorded and that's what I wanted to show is what is not connected so this activity is not connected with a successor so that's going to be a problem if I'm trying to have a complete critical path well now what I need to do is I need to tell it that I'm done all right so I'm going to go to macros and I'm gonna say stop recording. Before it said record, now it says stop recording. So I'm gonna click there, and that is that macro that is complete. All right, so I've got that. If I go view macros, I should see it there. I could run it from here if I want to, right? Uh, I'm going to right now bring things back to the way they were more or less without doing undo. I'm gonna go summary tasks. This filter here that I applied, I'm gonna click there and say select all. And then I'm going to click OK. And now it's showing me everything back the way it was. Right. So now the next thing I could do is I could click on Control L. And it just did it. Did you notice that? I just clicked Control L and it did all of the steps back again. Uh, so that's kind of handy. That's really handy. Again, just to. Uh, go back and show you I've got all of that I'll get rid of this filter and select all and click OK by the way you know I could create another macro I could create another macro so now it's because I did it again it's got two rows of successors there because it added that one 
I could get rid of both of these rows of successors so they're not even there. Um, and the other way, as I mentioned, that you could do it because maybe you don't want to use the control L for that when I set it up. Remember I said you've got a limited amount. The other way that you can do it is you can go to the view tab, you can go to macros and you can go to view macros and you might have 10 on this list or 20 on this list or you know whatever that you've created. Uh, then you can just click on run and it will do the same thing. It will pull that up and then you've got everything filtered just to show you the open ends in that case. So that's a really kind of cool thing that you can actually um, do and perform in those ways on your actual uh, computer. And you'll find that that's very handy when creating uh, shortcuts on using Microsoft Project. You could use this for a lot of things. For example, let's say we wanted to create another macro. Maybe another interesting one to create might be if I go to View Macros, uh, we will go Record Macro. Uh, let's call this Cash Flow Report. Maybe I'll do Cash Flow. And I'm just going to put number one here. All right, I'm not going to do the control file. I could type in the whole description here, you know, cash flow report by the month. All right, and I'll just click OK. I'll leave these as they are. And so now it's running. So I would go to then report. I would go to costs. I would go to cash flow. And now it's in there by the quarter. So I would click on the this uh, chart. I would go over to the time field over here. I would say edit. And then I'd say, don't show it to me by the quarter. Show it to me by the months. And then I would, you could even put a time frame, but I'm going to leave it at start to finish. And I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to show me that. And that sounds like it is good so I'm going to go back to my view tab I'm going to go to macros and I'm going to say stop recording I'm going to go back to my Gantt chart over here and maybe I'm doing something else you know I uh, did something else in the file and I go oh you know what I want to see my cash flow report I would just go to macros view macros cash flow run it and there it is done one step so if there's something, a report or something that takes you a bit of time, because some of these reports you can really customize, you could put all those steps into a macro and boom, report done. Not remembering all these steps and customizing it every time, which can drive you a little bit bonkers. So that's what I wanted to cover today with regards to macros. If you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe, click the like, leave a comment. If you've got ideas for other videos that you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments. And this is Tom Stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to check the Microsoft Project playlist for more videos on Microsoft Project. Bye for now.